Okay, so for today's class, we're going to look at Pinterest. This is another uh, very useful and powerful and popular social network. It's been around, I think, since about 2011. Let's go ahead and go to Pinterest.com. Pinterest.com. So we're going to create one of these together. If you don't have one yet, we'll create it in a moment. If you already have an account, we can use it. Or if you'd like to create a new one, we can do that as well. And as I asked earlier, some of you seem to already have an account, but some of you don't seem to have it as, an, as a business account. So just like Facebook and Google+, we need a business account for your business on Pinterest. Technically, if you created a business as a personal account, you're violating the terms of service, and technically your Pinterest account could be shut down because you're not using it according to the contract. We'll see that we can fix that. But before we get into that, Pinterest. If you haven't heard about it, it's another social network, another network where you share pictures, text, video, etc. Pictures, however, are the big selling point of Pinterest. And you can't see very much on Pinterest until you create an account or you sign in I've noticed that over the last several months they've really gotten annoying about it. You can't see anything on Pinterest until you sign in. We'll do that in a moment. Uh, but this says it's got 50 billion pins to explore. Pins is their term for content. So I'm going to make some notes here. I'll provide you your notes at the end of the day. So Pinterest calls them pins. Twitter calls them tweets, and then uh, I don't think there's a special name for Facebook and Google+, Plus. I think they just call them posts. Just different names for the same sort of thing, which I'm going to call generically content. You're sharing content on Pinterest, you're sharing content on Twitter, you're sharing content on Facebook. They might have different names, but it's all the same sort of idea. It's content related to your business. So all of the social networks have that concept. It's content. And basically all of the social networks have the various interactions. We have comments. We have likes. We have shares. Uh, slightly different names, Twitter replies, I think Twitter also calls them likes, and um, Twitter calls them retweets. So you get the idea. They may have different names, it's the same sort of concept, so whatever we learned on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, applies to various degrees here on Pinterest. Differentiator, differentiator, and differenti differentiator. And you don't have spell check, everything's a challenge. Differentiator of uh, Pinterest is um, that it's uh, focused on visuals. Um, all the networks have a way to share different kinds of content, of course, pictures, video, etc. And you can do video on Pinterest, although it's not that common. It's more about visuals, it's more about pictures, as we'll see. And uh, one, of the, one of the things about Pinterest also, uh, organically it seems to have started to focus on its own, or perhaps by design, the demographics of, a, um, of it are more uh, female-leaning. Uh, female female-leaning demographic. The larger population of users on Pinterest seems to be skewing toward females. So if your product or your brand or your business is targeting that demographic, this might be a great network to get into. Obviously, you can reach every kind of audience in every network, but it might be more difficult for some audiences depending on the network. Pin 
interest is like basically the new generation of the classic pin board. You see that board right there on the wall in this room? That's basically ancient Pinterest right there. That pin board, people can put flyers and pictures and whatever up on that board. You come into this room, you might see it, you might read it. You're getting informed, you're seeing content on the pin board. Pinterest is sort of the same thing. I'm going to create an account and I can have multiple boards to put my content into. A board for every single topic. Let's say that board was all about our technology classes. And on the back of the room I had one all about our art classes. And in the corner I had one all about our economy, economics classes. So I'm putting content of a particular topic on a particular board in the real world. And the same thing on Pinterest. I'm dividing up my content. I'm specifying the content per topic. So we'll see how that works, of course. There's not much to see here except to sign up, except for... Did you get the same picture as me here that says she used Pinterest to think outside the classroom, or did you get a different one? If you got a different one, very good. Look at, look at what it's saying. She used Pinterest to think outside the classroom. Join Pinterest to discover and share and save creative ideas. I like how Pinterest gives you sort of a, if you've never used it before, it's giving it to you in a very prosaic way, like what do you do with Pinterest? Or why do I need to be on Pinterest? I'm already on Twitter. I'm already on Facebook. Why do I need another one? I like how they, how they kind of sell it to you here. So if yours is something different, think about how they, how they wrote it. Use Pinterest to think outside the classroom. So I, get, I gather that she's an instructor teaching kids, getting ideas to teach them things, discover and save creative ideas. Maybe it's doing some sort of lesson on a particular concept. So she might have gone to Pinterest, searched keywords, found various ideas of things to teach about science or math or history. I'm going to refresh my browser. I'm in Firefox and I've got that little refresh or reload button. Click the reload button. See if you get a different intro picture. This one says, he used Pinterest to dive deep. Join Pinterest to discover and save creative ideas. Okay, so this person, he's into aquatics and uh, I guess really is interested in marine life. Maybe he wants to look up, and I kind of see them in the background too. You can't see on my projector, but I see a lot of pictures about fish and coral reefs and water and all of that. So maybe he uses Pinterest to, to search keywords about scuba diving or um, you know, aquatics um, and finding that information for, for personal fulfillment, finding these pins for something interesting. Let me refresh that again. She used Pinterest to roll her first pasta. Join Pinterest to discover and save creative ideas. Okay, so here uh, someone that uh, uh, that is into DIY. Do you know what DIY is? Do it yourself. Uh, you can easily buy pasta. Lots of good pastas out there. What about making your own pasta? Doing it yourself. So she searched Pinterest. Perhaps pasta recipe. Found the recipe read the article or watched the video, did it herself. Well, the point of these ideas that it's giving us here is, think about how you can flip it to your own endeavors, to your own business. Let's say I am a, uh, you know, a pasta company. Let's say I am trying to sell my own organic gluten-free pasta. I could put pictures and videos and blog posts and links of pasta on Pinterest. And when people search how to make your own spinach pasta, and I had posted, I had pinned pictures of spinach pasta, this person can find my pin. And at the very least, maybe gives a like, and at the best, follows the link to buy my pasta. The scuba diver, what if I am some sort of um, travel agency 
and I want to have people book uh, trips to great scuba destinations. So as I'm sharing the pictures and the links and the videos and the stories of vacationing at uh, scuba resorts, people could search that, find my pins, and again, at the very least, they simply reply or they like or they share. But at the best, I could get a link, I could get a click back to my website where they call me or where they book the trip. Let's see some other ideas here perhaps. There's the scuba diver again. Alton Brown uses Pinterest to tackle game day recipes. So Alton Brown, big name in the world of cooking and chefs, He's like on two or three shows on Food Network. Um, you know, basically celebrity endorsement, celebrity using using Pinterest. So uh, he, the spiel is that he searches Pinterest to find recipes for game day. Um, he probably has, not only is a TV personality, but I believe he sells cookware that's branded to him and uh, cookbooks and such. Well, he's going to be sharing stuff on Pinterest and he's going to get found and then someone sees, oh, that recipe is in his book. Let me click to buy, to buy the book, perhaps. So those are the ideas that we're sort of reiterating, but in a different way, about why we use social media for business. I'm going to share that photo. I'm going to share that video. I'm going to share that link to my stuff, to my products, to my website. And I'm going to get found, hopefully, in the network. And then someone then, after that, will click. To, to like, to reply, to buy. So these are all theoretical. Let me show you one tangible. You can look at this if you'd like, or just watch this for a moment. I have a colleague, um, former student, actually, who's also a web designer. And uh, he has an account on Pinterest. So if you'd like to check this out, Pinterest.com, Mosher13. This is Chuck. Chuck has a an account on Pinterest, and uh, he's doing pretty well on Pinterest, I think. And one uh, one way to measure success, perhaps, is followers. He's got thirty three thousand followers, so it looks like he's been doing pretty well on Pinterest. His information, his bio at the top, his name, location, website, prominent. And then his other social networks. I'm a web designer and developer, husband, father, and outdoorsman. I'm enjoying passing along inspiration and knowledge. Some stats. He's got 56 boards. We'll see what that is. Nearly 6,000 pins, 165 likes, 33,000 and a half followers. He's following 153. So the same sorts of stats from other networks. Twitter has followers. Pinterest has followers. Google Plus has following. You're following. Pinterest has your following. Twitter has tweets. Facebook has posts. Pinterest has pins. He shared nearly 6,000 things on Pinterest. There's also likes on Twitter. There are plus ones on Google+. There are likes on Pinterest. And one of the differentiators on Pinterest is boards for organization. say boards for organization. You don't you can't quite organize your content on Twitter. You can hashtag it and then it's organized in that sort of way, but it's still your content will get away from you because it's tied to everyone else's content if you hashtag it. Facebook, similar thing, you can use hashtags there. You have groups, but those haven't really taken off. So organization-wise, I suppose, over on, on Facebook, you can do albums, but that's f limited to pictures. Google Plus has a good, has strong organization. Google Plus has communities and collections. Remember, 
and Pinterest has boards, just another way to group things together into various topics. So looking at Chucks, and again, you might not be able to see very much because Pinterest is really going to nag you to sign in. There's a board called Infographics, Cool Photos, Web Design, Great Web Designs. And if I click on a board like Infographics, it may let me see it or it may not. Yeah, it's going to annoy me to log in. Uh, but it's going to show me the different pins about this topic. These, in, these are infographics that either he created or he has found and shared. And there are 2,000 pins here, 2,000 posts to this board with 32,000 followers. A lot of people are interested. So when he shares a new infographic, 32,000 people could potentially see it. He could get impressions, as we've talked about over and over, impressions and conversions. So 32,000 people see it. That doesn't mean 32,000 people are going to hire him. Remember the 1% rule. That's 1% 1 of 32,000. 300 or so? 32? 300? Something. So some amount of people could still follow through from that 1%. If I look at a different board, cool photo, well, let's say web designs. I look here. This one's got 1,300 followers. So people can pick and choose what type of your content they would like to follow. On Twitter, if, you, if someone follows you, they're basically going to see everything you post. If someone follows you on Facebook, they're going to see everything you post. If they follow you on Google+, Plus by default, they're going to see everything that you post. Uh, here on Pinterest, a person can choose to follow a specific board. You notice how much more popular the infographics board is than the web designs board. The point of this is to specialize, to specify. I asked him because I don't have 33,000 followers on, on Pinterest, and I asked them, how, do you, how did you get so good on Pinterest? So we're basically sharing different things on different boards and being specific, being active. That's very easy advice. Everyone can do that. And there is a little bit of luck to it, but it's mostly about what you share. So people are really interested in this topic, less interested in this one perhaps, less interested in that one. And again, I can't show you everything here. Pinterest is going to have me log in. Maybe we can do that way. Look at all of these different boards he's made. Books worth reading, Star Wars stuff, humorous stuff, fun baby clothes, stuff I want to buy my wife, tattoos, spectacular art photos. So he's sharing a bunch of things. Business related, non-business related, serious, fun, etc. But he's sharing different things. And for him, he's built up this audience, 33,000 and a half followers, 32,000 or so specifically for that. So it's not that he created 1,000 infographics. He might have created three. But he's also sharing other people's content, getting views, getting attention. And when someone is interested, I need someone to hire, I need to hire someone uh, to do an infographic for me, or to take photos for me, or to illustrate for me. Well, that's basically like showing what he can do to some degree, what he can get hired for to some degree. Uh, packaging design, for example. So again, Pinterest is going to have you sign in. But um, what we're going to do then is create the account if you don't have one. Or if you do have one, you can use it. But uh, I still recommend perhaps uh, create a new account. So at the top right corner, I'm going to go through the process of signing. Actually, uh, not that, uh, before that. Let me back up. I'm going to back up back to Pinterest.com, because this is, again, I was about to fall into the pit trap. If you simply uh, click log in or sign up, it'll want you to create a personal account. I don't want a personal account. I want a business account. Back on the Pinterest homepage, look at that, businesses. That's what we want. 
So if you already have an account but you didn't create it this way, you can upgrade it. So everyone should click on businesses down there. Back on the home page, click businesses. Join as a business or convert an account. So if you didn't go through this process, it's basically business dot pinterest dot com if you didn't go through this process before you might not have the proper account uh, i haven't converted an account very recently so i don't recall the process but i don't believe you lose anything um, if you're not if you're not sure what will happen you can create a brand new one like i'm about to do at this point before i do that again get discovered by millions of people looking for things to plan buy and do. Listen again to that active language. I am a bakery. I want to sell baked goods. People that want to buy are on Pinterest. Let's say I am again a, uh, a um, travel agency. People want to do something, get a vacation and such. They're, they're found here or plan a vacation. They can plan something. Or I, I'm a blogger. Let's say I'm a food blogger. I like to uh, eat at restaurants and review them, but I've also got my own recipes, and maybe I uh, want to make money off my blog. So I'm going to blog, but I'm also going to share on Pinterest. They can do, they can read my blog, they can subscribe to my blog. Yes. If you sign in with your current email, it'll think that you want to go to your personal account. So what I would do is go through the convert now process, and you can keep your email, and it'll convert your personal into a business account. Can you have two different accounts with one email? No. No, you, you do need different accounts with different emails. So if you create another email address, then you can use that second one to create a, a personal one or a business one. Just scrolling briefly here. Featured success stories. These are different sorts of businesses and how were they successful. I would read these at some point. I would follow these sort of like case study success stories. What did they do? They're giving you the advice for these various brands. What did they do? What can you implement? There's a blog here, three ways to create better pins. Because you are always going to get writer's block, or creator's block on all of these networks. Let's say you're only going to focus on Pinterest. We've learned about Twitter, Google+, Facebook. But let's say you've, you've used Pinterest and you want to keep using Pinterest. Well. You can focus all your efforts there. Great. But you might get into writer's block at some point. What am I going to share now? What am I going to do this week? So keep up to date with the blog here. Three ways to create better pins. Advice. Make them beautiful. Notice it's giving you here. Start with high quality images. They should be crisp, clear, well composed. Vertically oriented pins look best on mobile, so make sure make your stand up nice and tall with a vertical image aspect ratio of two to three to one to two point eight, minimum width of six hundred. So it's giving you advice right here what kind of pictures and dimensions and proportions to share, but it's telling you vertical pictures. Because when we actually log in and see content, we're going to see a long scrolling list of pictures, and they're basically vertical. Any picture can be added, of course. But they're saying, we've seen that the vertically oriented pictures seem to work better for people. Uh, fresh from the oven, baking trends. Okay, I'm a bakery. This might be useful to me. What are these trends? How should I be sharing? And yes, I'm going to see a lot of amazing photos and think I could never take a photo like that. Um, these things are attainable. Uh, you are able to take a photo like this. This is, just a, this is just a pizza with pretty close up. The problem with people have with doing photography is 
always, they're too far away from the subject, number one, and number two, their lighting isn't so good. If I'm trying to take a photo of my, of my uh, product here, let's say I, say I sell staplers, and I'll take a photo of that to put it on Pinterest, probably most people are going to be like this, I'm going to stand right here and take a photo. And in my mind's eye, this is an amazing photo, but in the camera's eye, it's terrible. The camera has no brain, so it doesn't fill in the gaps. It doesn't make the photo better than it is. A better photo would be, I'm going to get close up to it, and I'm going to turn on the light and shine the light on it. I'm going to think about really focusing on my picture. That's the secret to all of these. That's not the whole pie. That's a corner of the pie with the utensils. That is the whole plate there, yes, but it's nicely lit. Again, a piece of it, a close up. None of these are like someone standing here and taking a photo of those products there. They're close. That's one of the big secrets of this stuff. Get close and use a lot of light. Like this light right here. I probably would not get a very good photo out of this standing here. I'd have to turn on one more, some more lights here, or maybe go on a different spot where there's more light. Flash? Don't use flash. Flash is terrible. The flash that comes right out of our phones, it's, it's the worst even with like the newest high-tech triple color flashes and all of that. It's just so harsh that it lands on the subject and makes these weird shadows. So don't try to get flash. Don't try to use flash. Use ambient light, but make sure there's a lot of light in the environment. And this is interesting. Uh, not only does Pinterest have a Pinterest account, Maybe check out their Pinterest account to see what they're doing. They've got a Facebook account. They've got a Google+. Plus, they've got a Twitter, YouTube, Flickr, GitHub. They're on all the networks. So that should be telling you, you should be on the different networks too. That's what this whole class is about, an overview of all of these networks. And it's recommended for you to be active on all of them. There's only so many hours in the day and time and money and effort to go around. So yeah, as you get this over, you might decide, well, I want to I want to focus on YouTube. Great, have at it, just keep at it. Little by little, you, uh, Pinterest is rolling out the concept of people being able to directly buy your your products. Right now, I believe only the big companies like Amazon and Martha Stewart have a buy now button right on the pin. These are a little dollar symbol on them. The big companies have that. Us little people don't have that yet. Uh, they're still kind of working it out in beta. I've signed up for the beta and I feel like this thing is, I've been on the waiting list for like a year and I haven't really gotten any updates from it yet. So they're still trying to figure out the perfect way to do this, uh, I guess. But eventually you will be able to sell your pin directly from Pinterest and you're still going to share content and link them back to your website. All we need to do is create an account here. So I will click Join as a Business. Ask for an email address, password, and the usual. So I'm going to add an email. If you're going to create this just to learn this, uh, uh, you can make this up for the moment. That is not an email. Uh, that is not a real email. I'm going to make it up. It's going to nag you to confirm your email address, but I can get by without confirming it. Uh, so if you just want to kind of learn this and test drive what I'm about to talk about, create a brand new account, make it up, or use your existing account. Make up a password, business name. This is not the address at the top yet. We get that username a little bit later. This is your name as it appears on Pinterest. And they can be different. Your address and your business name, like on Twitter. Usually it's the same thing. And I guess there's not really a limit to this thing, so it can be a, a big name. I'll do Victor's Bakery. And this is not unique. Like Twitter, this is not unique. There can be more than one Victor's Bakery be more than one of anything. This name here. But when we get to the actual address, uh, the link of your account, that's unique. Select a business type. There's a lot to choose from here. Um, 
various big ideas where you fit in. I am, let's say, brand perhaps, local business, <clears throat> retailer. I think I can fit in a, in a couple of spots here. There's no wrong answer and it can be changed. But this is just to help you get found a little easier. Website optional, but I would highly recommend that if you do have a website, put it in. And it doesn't have to be your home page. It doesn't have to be your .com or .net. It could be your Etsy link. It could be your eBay, your Amazon, whatever selling platform you have, Smug Mug or Cafe Press or whatever, where you're selling your products. Because you can't sell directly on Pinterest, most of us, but you can still guide people back over to your platform where you do sell. I'll create that account. All the networks nowadays have what is known as an onboarding feature, which is basically what happens when you first create it, when you get on board the platform. In the old days, these platforms, you created an account, it just threw you in there, sink or swim. But nowadays, there's this procedure where tell us what you're interested in, tell us what your product is, what you like. And the point of this is to show you content or perhaps potential customers on a related topic, on your product topic and such. And so it's saying here you should select five topics or search Recipes. Desserts. I'll search here for drink, health foods. So I'll select a few topics and then I'll click done. We're going to talk about pinning something to Pinterest, of course. And here it's going to remind you, and it'll do it several times, would you like to add the Pinterest browser button? This is different than the button that you see added on someone's website. This is added to your web browser, and at the moment I'm in Firefox. If you're in a different browser, it may have a different screen or not at all. But we're going to see later when you want to share your content to Pinterest. There's several ways. One is this Pinterest button. For the moment I'll skip it. We'll, be, we'll get back to it. So there's a little skip button down there. It's going to say again, are you sure you don't want it? Yes, I'll skip it for the moment. I chose these interests and then it's going to show me a home screen all about these topics, my home feed, I created my account. I see a bunch of stuff. You might see a, a, a link that says visit the Omni Analytics. Um, we'll check that a little later. But Pinterest will give us the ability to check uh, how well we're doing, our impressions and conversions and all of that, just like Twitter, Facebook, etc. Uh, let's jump over first to one. Uh, we'll look at a couple of settings and then we'll look at the anatomy of the interface. On the top right corner, on the top right corner, uh, there will be a generic pin icon. Eventually, that'll be your company logo. We'll see how to change that a little later. But hover over your uh, your your icon up on the top right and then select settings. I'll look at some settings briefly. This is where you can change your email, your password, your language, country, business type, 
contact name is what's the name of your account on Pinterest? Scrolling down, search privacy. Hide your profile from search engines like Google, Bing, Yahoo. If you want to hide yourself from the search engine, you can turn that on. Usually you don't want that. You want to be able to be found by the search engines. Personalization. If you recall when we created Twitter, it asked us, would you like us to personalize your tweets? And you could say yes or no. Here it didn't really ask us, it assumed yes. And what this is, use sites you visit to improve which recommendation and ads you see. Now there's no way you can get out of ads nowadays, unfortunately. Every website's going to have ads. <coughs> and Pinterest is going to show you ads too. But you can say, okay, based on what I like and websites that I've visited, show me ads and show me content that I might care more about. If I'm a bakery, I probably want to see stuff about baked goods and cooking and health and all of that. So if I leave that on, it will try to show me that. If I turn it off, it'll just show me generic things. Maybe it'll show me sports pins or car pins, and that's not related to my business. So you're not going to get away from the ads, but maybe you want to focus what you see. And usually what this means is that Pinterest will leave a cookie on your computer, and a cookie is just a little piece of tracking code. And yes, that sounds scary, but everything uses cookies. Cookies have been around since the beginning of the web, basically. Um, so if you don't want that, you don't want to be tracked in that way, you can easily turn it off. And would you like the partners of Pinterest, which we can click here to see who are they, would you like to see content from Pinterest partners if you're interested in their content? So whatever you'd like there, search history, that, that should make sense what that is. Deactivate account, if you want to give up on Pinterest, you don't want it anymore, you can click on that. It'll delete your account, but uh, I believe they give you 30 days to change your mind. If you want to actually, you thought, well, maybe I was too hasty, I want to get back into Pinterest, it'll save your account for about 30 days, and then after that it'll delete it. Profile. Business name. Change icon. Again, you want to change your icon as soon as possible. You don't want to be the generic pin, just like you don't want to be the generic egg on Pinterest, or the generic flag on Facebook. You want to have your logo there. And notice again, it's a proportional logo. It's not square, like Twitter. It's round. It's actually round like Google+. Plus. Uh, but it's proportional. It's not a rectangle. So if your logo is a rectangle, horizontal or vertical, it's going to look weird here. This is uh, very common nowadays to have a, some sort of logo on your website that is more of a square shape. So uh, think about designing one of those for yourself. Username. Here's the spot where you where you select your custom address. And right now you probably have some sort of semi-gibberish name. I want a name here that is memorable and is, is my brand name. An annoying thing here is that it will not tell you if the name is taken until you type it and then click Save. So don't worry about putting this stuff in. First, add a name and then save it and say it's already taken. So I'm kind of surprised that it's not smart enough to tell me dynamically at this moment it's taken until I try to save it. Uh, so if you're just creating this test temporary account, you may not want to pick your name just yet. But if this is your real account, you, you want to claim it as soon as possible so no one else does. And I think you can change it as many times as you want. So Victor's Bakery is taken, but what about Victor's underscore bakery? Save settings. Taken. So just for the moment, I'll just put Victor's Bakery 1. That worked. I need to go back to my settings again. And remember, you want to uh, claim the name of your business on these networks as soon as you can. You may never use Pinterest. But if you do decide at some point, you're going to kick yourself that you didn't get that name when you had the chance. Because you these networks are terrible about releasing unused names. 
if there exists a Victor's Bakery, but that company has not used it in two years, I can't really bug Pinterest to give it to me. Uh, none of these networks really are that, d do that at the moment, and I think that's a big failing for them. There's a spot for about info. Let's see, I think you can, how much can you write? 160 characters. That one's smart enough to tell you you went over the edge. You have 160 characters to write something. And you can write the same thing that you've been writing over on Twitter, Facebook, it's all right. Or because you're on a different network, you could write something slightly different. So, family owned bakery in East Lake, California. Visit us for special deals. Put a location to help you get found, and then confirm your website. This is a bit of a process, we can't quite do it here, but if you go through this confirm, it'll ask you take this piece of code, add it to your website. As much as I can say for the moment, if you need specific help how to do that, see me during the breaks. But then this will confirm that this Pinterest account is linked with this official website, and then uh, you'll get a little verification check mark on your profile. Because anyone can create an account uh, on Pinterest, but only one really is a legitimate account, so you should verify at some point. Let's save that and I need to get back to settings again. What else? Notifications. We'll take a quick look here. Um, every network gives you some form, of some form of notification that something happened. Did you get a follow? Did you get a like? Did you get a reply? Those notifications will appear on the top right corner under this little bubble. The old icon, I remember, was like a couple of pins that were sort of like in the yin-yang orientation, but now it looks like an actual sort of speech bubble. That's your notifications, and you can choose. So you need to choose here what, what you think is appropriate. Uh, give me notifications from everyone or people you follow. This is how the celebrities stay sane on the, on the network, because when people are tweeting to them, or pinning them, or talking to them on Pinterest, you're going to get lots of notifications. If it's got, if it's set to everyone, if you set it to only people you follow, if you've got a mutual connection, that's when you'll see the notifications. Most likely, you'll want to keep this to everyone as a business, because you do want to be notified of everything that happens about your account, even those that you are not following. One thing that I sort of recommend when, 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 whenever we set up a Pinterest account for people, they kind of get flooded with emails. And notice here, send me an email every time this happens. I get a like, I get an invite, I get a comment. If you turn it off, you won't get emails but you will get the notification in Pinterest. If you have it on, you might be getting a lot of emails here, also such as weekly inspiration. You're going to be getting these emails. The more you use Pinterest, the more it'll know about your account and therefore send you emails like, you might be interested in this pin, or this account, or this topic. So I personally think Pinterest sends out way too many emails. But perhaps as a beginner, you might leave these things on to see the emails you get, and they might be useful to you. I've been using Pinterest a while, I kind of know how it works and what they're about, but if you'd like to get inspiration, again, writer's block is going to set in. So via this inspiration, you see something that Pinterest says, have you seen this? And that gives me the idea to then myself pin something or share something like that. You can get the app uh, on Android, 
iPhone, etc. Would you like to get those notifications on your app? So you have to go through there, see what those settings are. You can potentially get a lot of things. Again, when people feel, well, it's sending me too much stuff. You need to go to these settings like stuff you might like. I think that's a little too much, but it might be useful to you. You can connect these other networks to Pinterest, so that means that you can log in with those networks into Pinterest or share between them a little bit easier. You can connect your various address books. The point of that is Pinterest will check who else that you know is on Pinterest. Oh, Janet's on Pinterest. You might want to connect with her. Bill's on Pinterest. You might want to connect with him. This is optional, of course. And if you've used Pinterest to connect with other apps and services, they'll be listed here. And you can revoke that access. Any questions on the settings here? Not as well as you would think, because I would want to pin something and then automatically have it sent to Facebook or Twitter or Google+. And there are limitations to what it sends to the other networks. This is a bit more like, I'm going to log in, and I'm going to log in via my Twitter. So it's sort of like using the same key to enter different houses. So this is not that useful. Let me see if they've changed things under... So how do you get it to post to Facebook as well? In your we can try via the network itself to share to the other networks, but I'm going to show in a little while this extra ancillary app that I recommend to be able to manage all your networks at once. So through that network that I'll talk about, you share something to it, and it will share automatically to your Facebook and your Pinterest and your Twitter, etc. So I wouldn't worry too much about this, because I'm going to show a better way to share to multiple places in a, in a little while. Alright, so I'm going to back up to at the top left corner. Well, we'll take a quick look at the anatomy of our Pinterest account here. At the top left corner, you've got the Pinterest Home button. If you click that, it takes you to your home feed, which is all of the accounts that I'm following, their pins will show up here. All the topics that I'm following show up here. Anything that I pin could show up here, but this is basically my home screen, my, my home feed. Like on Twitter, when I go to the home screen, I see all the tweets of who, who I follow. When I go to the home screen on Facebook, I see all the stuff that people have shared that I follow, etc. So, content of those that I'm following shows up here. Analytics. Overview profile audience. There's not much to look at here. But under analytics, here's where I can see my statistics. I pinned something. I got this number of impressions, actual conversions, etc. Clicks to my website. I need to confirm. All of that. They've made this much more prominent nowadays, ads. I won't go through this process, but here, just like Facebook, uh, you, can, you can boost, you can promote your pins. You can pin something and have more people see it. Great, people see it, but it's still up to you to entice people to click, or to buy, or to follow, or to comment. I'm not going to go through this at the moment, but there's a whole ad system similar to what we talked about on Facebook last week. All the networks basically have a way for you to pay for more visibility, except Google+, uh, because it is more tied into their whole AdSense system. But you can pay to, to boost your tweets or your pins or your Facebook posts, your YouTube videos when we get to that. We've got a search box in the middle. We'll look at that in a moment. Next to the search on the right side, this is uh, pretty useful. These are these various topics. If you click there, you'll see, okay, show me 
end all of our DIY and crafts. So it'll show you the latest pins on a particular topic. If I am sharing content with some of these keywords or put into boards with these keywords, my pins could show up here. The pins of these topics could show up here. So just taking a quick look at DIY crafts, I see rainy day survival guide, quilting a basic tutorial, gold skinny bar mama necklace, 34 things you can improve with a sharpie. Okay, so I'm seeing pictures, small pictures, big pictures, tall pictures. Some are sort of like a teaser. So looking here, DIY life planner for less than five dollars. So I see a snippet of text, something to entice me. I see a picture. <coughs> Who posted it? Jennifer Sutton events. I might see other sorts of pictures that are sort of like giving you the the information more completely. Here's a four four picture sequence of of content that I can get right from right from Pinterest. Fifteen easy DIY floor cushions. Okay, that maybe that interests me. So what I would do is if I if I uh, if I click on any sort of pins. Uh, icon it shows me the the picture larger so I can I can get the zoomed in view um, and uh, this takes getting used to but if you click on the picture itself it just shows you the picture large oftentimes there's a link attached to the picture that is a different kind of link so here learn more learn more, learn more. So these have a link. If I then click there, that's going to go back to cooldiyideas.com. So a link back to their blog where I can read the whole thing. It's only a little tease, it's a preview, it's a snippet here on Pinterest. You're not going to share the whole, the whole thing here. You're going to share something to entice people. How to upgrade your light switch covers. Mini bar in a jar. Let's say I look at a different topic. Um, food. So I've got Victor's Bakery, what's being shared on food, and I've got other things here. Be breakfast and brunch. Lemon curd meringues are pretty as a picture. Stuffed zucchini boats with quinoa and pine nuts, etc. So again, I'm going to see. Look at that. Walmart has a has an account here, promoted by Walmart. They're paying to get more visibility here. Cheesy French pinwheel tarts. Okay, seems interesting. I'll click their link. It takes me back to their website. It's still going to be at their website where I get the full article, the full recipe. It might be great, so I will subscribe. They completed their their goal. Got a subscriber. Yes. That question is often answered on an individual basis because you don't know depending on your particular brand or product and such. But let's say you try different tactics. You try, I'm going to share this kind of picture, I'm going to share that kind of picture, I'm going to share this video. You try different things. You try something different every day for a week, let's say. Seven different ideas. And you're going to see what worked for me more was that I simply had a picture uh, and that got me a lot of uh, a lot of impressions, but a lot of conversions because they clicked on that link. Or you'll see, well, I got a lot of impressions uh, based on this one where I use hashtags, and I didn't use hashtags on on a different one. So really, the you're, you're going to see plenty of to, of blogs and such out there that tell you do this, and you'll get that result. And they're all right, and they're all wrong. 
because it's going to depend on your particular product. Maybe these food products have a much higher result when they share a certain kind of picture, like just out of these two right here, which are you mo most interested in clicking on? This one or this one? I think this is way too cluttered. It's maybe not that interesting. It's too jumbled. But looking at that, to me, maybe that's interesting enough. I'll click to see more. Other people might say, well, that looks very interesting. It's a lot of info. Let me click and I'll learn more about it. But it is different kinds of topics that are being shared. So there's no direct correlation with one type of win or the selling of food or something, you wouldn't go for likes first and then try and get people to pay for it. You would go for whatever serves the purpose, correct? Whatever serves the purpose, because as I do this for, for clients also, I've found that if I try to do the same in my own business, if I try to do the same sort of thing for different clients, it doesn't always resonate yeah. because it's different topics, different ideas. So I am trying to get all of these. I am trying to get a like from a great picture. And the like is really nice, but it's the lowest level of engagement. They click, they move on. The next higher level is a repin and a comment and so forth. So I'm going to try all of these things per client and see what hits. And in the end, they're all going to give me some result. Obviously, my best conversion is I make a sale. But a conversion of getting a like is still good. Someone knows I exist. Then I can follow through, as we'll see how, to try to get more out of them than a simple like. Yeah, a like is a little bit more like, yeah, like the awareness or, or just the impression. It is a conversion to some degree because they know you exist, at least, with that like. They didn't follow all the way through and go through the whole funnel and you get the sale. But any sort of, of these activities is very valuable. Yes? As a user of Pinterest, I've liked a lot of things. I like the image, I like the quote. But what I usually see is the person who sharing it or who posted it. I rarely ever make a connection to the original post. Mm -hmm. And so how do you make sure in 10 seconds that somebody is looking at something on Pinterest that you're actually showing them? It's going to depend on how uh, we share. So when we share in a little bit, we'll see how to give the proper attribution so that you are the originator. Because yes, these can easily be shared and reshared and go on and on and on, and they will have an attribution that, you know, where did it come from? So when we get to the point about sharing, we'll see the couple of different ways, the best way, so that your link is the original link so that people keep coming back to it. So browsing here, I'm seeing a variety of, of content, you know, honestly, just simply looking at this one, this is not a very good photo. Uh, I don't think it's very enticing. It is the close-up, like I'm saying, but the color on it is a bit weird. It's kind of bluish. Uh, so look at what people are sharing to get the idea. This one right here, also kind of personally not that good. It looks not that appetizing. I kind of know what it is here chicken and cheese casserole, but the picture itself is not that good. That might be an example where maybe I do want to show it plated. I do want to show it on the table in a nice tablecloth with the forks and spoons and such. And that one, being that close up to it, it's not quite working. This A close up of this one looks nice. A close up of that one, again, I'm not quite telling what that is. can't quite tell what that is. So get inspiration from what you're seeing people are doing. And yes, some of them are going to look very professional and say, I can't do that. Do your version of it. You know? That's, that's a cutting board. Uh, the most adorable, edible Winnie the Pooh you've ever seen. It's just a cutting board. Uh, you're not really going to cut these things on the board, I guess. But that's just another prop. What is really popular is these uh, these focus. Um, it's a term for it. I'm blanking on it, but the focus is right on here, and look at how this stuff is slightly blurry. That sort of thing is, is pretty popular because then it helps you focus on something. Here's another one that's not a good photo. That looks like a weird just jumble of I don't know, but it's applewood cider slow cooker chicken. The photo itself, that photo, slightly better. This would be another example is I'd love to see that 
on an actual plate. I don't quite get a good sense of what it is. This one right here is another photo, not to be so negative, but these things stand out to me. So uh, this one here, it's kind of blurry. You might not see it on your projector, but on my screen, this is a little blurry. So when you, when you get close to something, make sure it's in focus, because then it looks more professional. Anyway, uh, again, uh, we'll, we'll look at what people are doing. We'll talk about tactics to, to get impressions and conversions in, in a little bit, sharing our own content, of course. Just let me finish going over the general anatomy of, of Pinterest, and then we'll specify. The next icon is to actually share, to pin, and we've got a couple different ways. Pin from a website, upload from a computer, create an ad. I'm going to recommend that we'll do it in we'll do it together. I'm going to recommend that when you share something to Pinterest, pin it from your website. Take it from your website and add it to Pinterest. We'll see why in detail a little later, but the short answer is that it will have your link built in. If you upload it from your computer, it will not have a link back to your website built in unless you add it. So if you share from your website, Pinterest is smart enough to bring along the link and that cannot be changed by people. If you add your link via the way we'll see via upload, people can remove that link and therefore your content will be lost. If you pin it from here, Pinterest keeps the attribution back to your own website. And then of course create ad is getting more people to view your, your content and it might it might be valuable to spend a few dollars I don't remember what the minimum ad buy is for Pinterest, but let's say it's $10. $10 to possibly get leads or even conversions that result in $100, $50, $20 sale is still great. You know, $10, that's a latte and a half. So you could probably scrounge that up. <clears throat> Notifications. Here it'll... Uh, It'll tell you what's happening with your activity. Uh, is there any news? What's trending? You may or may not see that, but if you see trending topics, this is an idea of what to share. Um, you have messages, you can have private messages and all of that. So what's new on Pinterest? What are notifications for you? What are people doing with your content? Messages. And then again, your profile up there. So what we'll do is um, we'll take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk about, um, again, the, the paradox. Are we going to try to get followers first, or are we going to share stuff to no one first? So uh, we'll take a break at 7.17. We'll be back at 7.27 and then we'll go on.